oh, look at this rated G movie. Well, this looks very, <laughs> this looks very good. Yeah, uh, I like this G movie. And can you put that in there too? Because I, because I want to know what Martin Scorsese's done. Are most great stories an outsider story? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I feel like I'm an outsider, and I feel like almost everyone I know feels like an outsider at some point in their life if not often, probably more than 50% of the time. So maybe that's why we can kind of gravitate toward outsider stories. Um, yeah, and it, you know, it's, we look at a film like Mean Girls or something, and it's, it's about people just trying to be together and fit in. It's, we have this urge to, we have this urge to be together and part of the tribe. And so uh, the, the, the outsider story is fun to play with, but I don't think any of us want to be an outsider, but it's fun to watch the outsider because we kind of can, we feel like we're outsiders. If that makes sense. It does. I'm trying to think of the movie I just watched from the, is it Pump Up the Volume with Christian Slater? Oh, yeah, yeah. And so here he's this radio guy and everybody kind of worships him because he just says whatever he wants. Yeah. And they can't believe what they're hearing. And then, you know, the, the faculty is just incensed by it. And then in real life, he's this awkward guy that he wants he, he wants to be part of the group. But then he's kind of turned off by that whole suburbia high school hierarchy thing. And um, it just had me thinking about that. Just sort of this guy that actually when you listen to him, he spoke to everyone. But then... For whatever reason, he was too scared at the at the high school to yeah try to navigate the social hierarchy yeah and um, but but we we have these these hero stories mm -hmm. where are they always the outsider? I guess maybe that's what makes the the hero's arc is that I guess yeah I guess in order for I mean for the most part when you know we have our hero's journey and I think. It's a singular hero. Um, I think it's because we can, we can relate to the problems of one person for 90 minutes. Um, if you bring in too many people or, you know, the, the ensemble cast, there tends to be a veering towards the one person that's really pushing it all the way through. Um, so we, we have to have that. We also almost have to have that mirror. Who's my mirror here? Oh, it's Cameron Diaz. Okay, great. I'm with her on this journey. Um, and that's, and I don't think that's real life in any way at all. But for, um, well, we're all our own heroes in our own journeys, but we're also a collective. But so it, I guess our protagonist is an outsider of sorts because the protagonist needs to be spun around. They need to be pushed back on their heels. And that's why we're interested. It's just like, oh, wait, they're, they're spun around. They're dizzy. How do they stop being dizzy? Okay, that's fun. Now, how do I turn the page or sit here uh, for another 10 minutes to find out what the next two scenes are? Because that was interesting. What peril is this character going to be in? So, yeah, it would make sense that the characters would be outsiders. This, um, you know, during COVID, we... We have all these, uh, the, the movies I've watched have not been movies I would watch, you know, they're comfort movies. And The Wrong Missy came out, the David Spade movie um, that Adam Sandler uh, produced. And um, and it's not a movie I'd go run to see, but I watched it and it's just, um, he is he is an outsider. He's, he's in his own tragedy. It's a comedy, but he's in the utter tragedy of thinking that he found the, the, you know, it's it's really formulaic. And I just, you know, if, I, if I just told you two or three description, you'd be like, oh, so the act one is this, act two is this, act three is this. And it's like, yeah, it is. But it's fun to watch him get there. What movie protagonist do you, do you feel the most um, connection to? <laughs> Could be male or female. <laughs> well, so when I was young, and this was, uh, I, there, there was this movie called Johnny Suede. Brad Pitt starred in it that came out and Tom DeCillo wrote it. And I look at it now and it's absurd and it's hilarious. But at the time, I, w I thought I was Johnny Suede. I am, it's, it was Brad Pitt's first leading role. And, um, and it, it's just about a guy who's trying to figure out love and wants to get a band together. <laughs> 
<laughs> just like, <laughs> I'm like, that's me. Um, and it's just kind of silly because uh, it's a, uh, um, he's really kind of a dopey character and not, you know, I, I don't know why I gravitated to him so much. I think, I think it was because I was trying to figure out love and, um, you know, was kind of always wanted to have, you know, getting a band together is like getting a group of friends together. It's just like, how do we, how do we, how do a bunch of guys, you know, um, come together and, uh, you know, not make love? Well, let's just get a band. <laughs> it's, I, it's, everything's kind of intimacy. So he was trying to find his intimacy and blowing it beyond belief. And um, so when I think of a character that uh, I gravitated to when I was, uh, when I was young, it was, it was Johnny Swade and I had the, uh, yeah, it's uh, Tom DiCillo. Um, I got to interview him like 15 years ago and, and he's written books too. And I brought every single book. I'm like, please sign my books. Now he lives in LA. So, uh, I, I still have to like, uh, yeah. Anyway, he's, he's, uh, I'm a huge fan of his and I'm a huge fan of how honest he is about, um, his career as a filmmaker and how really rough and tumble it was. And, um, just the beauty of Johnny Swade and his other movie, Living in Oblivion, which came out after that. So, And sorry, you were still in the church at the time you mm -hmm. saw it? Okay. Yeah. Were you, and you didn't tell anyone that you saw the movie? I was very careful, yeah, because it was rated R. Oh. Okay. So I had to go to the video store. Actually, I think I bought the VHS. I bought the VHS oh. and, that, and I, I watched that thing. That's probably the movie I've seen the most in my life. Um, and, and I could probably... Uh, give you every line of dialogue from here. The reason I watched it was because uh, one of my favorite singers is in it, Nick Cave. So that was what turned me on to it. And then all of a sudden I'm like, well, that character spoke to me. So. Uh, would you hide the movie somewhere? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hide the, hide the movies, hide the records. Um, yeah. Where would you hide them? Um, yeah, not to, I, I actually had my own apartment at that time. So, oh, okay. Uh, so it was easy enough, but when I was like still living at home, it was uh, records were behind the dresser, and we would make mixtapes for our friends, and then we would hide the mixtapes, but we would all trade the tapes, and then we would keep the records at certain friends' houses, uh, move them back and forth. Wow, and it's just because they were rated R? That was for music, and that's because they were punk rock, and that was something oh. that, would, um, that right. no one would understand. Uh, um, uh, movies, I, no movies I wouldn't even bring into the house that were rated R. Um, but I would try to, I would, I would go to the video store and this was, this was when I was married. I'd go to the video store and then I would like look around to make sure no one from the congregation was around. And then I would like, you know, and then I'd pick up, oh, look at this rated G movie. Well, this looks very, <laughs> this looks very good. Yeah. Uh, I like this G movie. And can you put that in there too? Cause I, cause I want to know what Martin Scorsese's done. And then, um. Yeah, and then I went to the library constantly and um, was just checking out every movie that, you know, stuff like, I'd never seen Apocalypse Now, and it's just, I'd never, and I didn't know what a war movie was. I thought war movie was just violence and terrible, and it's just like, oh no, these are crafted films, and so, but I would have to watch them on my own and be very careful, yeah.